This is Boxing Tickets NA. We're here at Celtic Warriors Gym. Today to be joined once again with Dan, the man, lover boy. Are you still in love? Oh, yeah, yeah, still in love, still in love. Only, only new enough, but... I, I've been ripping, the, ripping you over on Instagram a few times with Thomas Carty. Um, obviously, love is in the air. Um, obviously, for yourself, probably, we fair to say maybe 2023, a disappointing sort of year that you're only able to get out once. Uh, how's obviously, I guess the good thing is obviously you're back now in action in two weeks' time, but you're probably glad they put 2023 to bed, probably. Yeah, big time. I'm delighted now to be back, obviously. It's just, it feels like so long. So the 1st of April last year was my last fight, and I picked up a hand injury in that in that fight. And it kind of, it took a good while to heal. I've seen specialists and stuff like that, they were saying it would heal in time. And then I was going to fight in September on the card in the stadium. That fight fell through, and it was nearly a blessing in disguise because the week of that fight, I sparred here, and my hand went again. So it was, it kept swelling, all my knuckle kept swelling. I went and seen a specialist again. They told me I'd need an operation. So I was waiting on the operation, but I was obviously, I was still training the whole time. And now my hands actually, it's actually better. So it'll heal, heal itself, did it? It, it healed itself. Now it's not 100%. It's, it's, it's never going to be the same kind of thing, but I'm working around it and I'm making sure I'm, I'm wrapping it properly and stuff now and taking the proper supplements and stuff like that. and just looking after it more. Whereas before I was just throwing on wraps and whacking away with the bags. And, Trying super shots inspire and give myself these injuries, but it's definitely better now, and I'm happy to be back with it. Tested it. Was it more like a knuckle sort of injury? Like, was it sort of maybe caused by bad hand wraps, or is it just obviously throwing punches and probably weird angles? <laughs> You could, you could say, it's hard to say what it was, because I went into that last fight and I actually had a slight uh, injury in my thumb. And I threw, I actually remember throwing the shot, it was in the fourth round, I threw a shot, landed right on top of your man's head, and I thought my hand was broke, the pain of it was running up my arm, and every time I could barely throw it, and stuff like that. But there was no breakage there, they told me it was just some sort of ligament damage or something like that, but it's right on the knuckle, but it's a lot better and I'm working around it now. So. <laughs> I guess these things sort of stick in your head, like obviously, unless you know it rings 100% physical you probably have to get through a fight for that mental aspect in your head you're going i have to watch how to throw a punch in a certain way like that's probably just gonna be stuck in your head until you actually fight again but like as it sort of make up for lost time obviously now in 2023 i guess you get out april last year thinking oh brilliant year an injury happens like has it been frustrating for you sort of to have no fight or has it probably been a blessing in disguise uh, for me, I, I feel very frustrated with it because I thought, you know, I've been so I started boxing late enough and I thought I wanted to kick on. I had the three fights within the year and I said that was good and I had a six rounder and I was hoping to do an eight rounder maybe after or even one more six and then kick on for Celtic titles because there's lots of lads at the weight, like middleweight and I thought 23, I thought by the end of 23 I would get a Celtic title. There was talks of Celtic title fights for the show in September and all that and it, it's very frustrating but I am just happy to be back now and hopefully all that is behind me and start kick, get the ball rolling. In this, in this show, the lads are coming over. The lads who manage Dillian White and stuff, Magic and stuff, and he's saying that they want to do regular shows here. So obviously, you have to come out and impress, try to get the support, sell the tickets, look good, and hopefully then I can get three or four more fights. By the time the year is up, and that will make up for all the last time last year. So it's sort of just like a sort of takeover now, and then sort of now you start to sort of plan towards a Celtic title again. Yeah, well, in fairness, I got an opponent there. He's from, he's coming from Czech Republic. He's four wins and two losses, so he's not bad. And my first southpaw as well. And his four wins have all been four knockouts, so I can't go in there thinking, oh, I'm going to blow him out there, but I, I don't want that either, you know, all that time off. You don't want to just go in and knock someone out and around, so I want to get a few rounds and try to go for my first knockout, and then, yeah, kick on, try look for Celtic titles. I see the lads are fighting Donegan and O'Neill. They're fighting the week after or two weeks after, and, you know, they're both shown that they'll fight domestic fights. They've been both shown that they'll are eligible for Celtic titles, so I'd like the winner of that after this, you know, however long it is, a couple of months, three, four months, I'll be ready for it, you know. Love's changed you as a man, you're calling people out now. Um, I guess I guess it's polite calling them out, I think you called them out, called people out before, but it's a polite way of doing things. Yeah, so my thing is, I, I said that time I'd like to fight the winner of, I think it was Owen Duffy and Owen O'Neill, I was saying I'd like to fight the winner of that, and then whatever, it never happened. And then Donegan, I said I'd fight Donegan, and I was talking to his manager Ian, he was his manager at the time, he said he'd make that fight, unfortunately whatever happened happened in his last fight, I think he lost or something like that, so that didn't happen then, but their fights that we were all already talking about, they nearly materialised, so that's the type of fight I'd like, but as I said, there's loads of lads at the way, so I'm not directly calling anyone out personally, but that's the kind of fight that makes sense, I believe, at the time, like Dublin versus Belfast or Dublin versus Cavan would be a big one. I'm just trying to stir the pot here and try to get you going. Who, who do you think wins that fight? Obviously, I know Owen O'Neill's obviously had the, the kill the bump before. They, they both fought um, as amateurs together. They've obviously had an exhibition. 
at Owen O'Neill hasn't won one of the two yet, so it's, a, it's like one defeat, one draw, as the exhibition was. So, how do you, how do you think wins that? Like, is Owen O'Neill with the, the confidence? Donegan's obviously come off a couple of defeats. Like, who wins it for you? Yeah, to be honest, it's, a, it's actually a great cra- clash of styles because I know Donegan, I fought Donegan in the amateurs in the exhibition and he's strong, you know, he's very strong and I've seen him fighting a couple of times and I've seen O'Neill fight. O'Neill's just relentless, he keeps strong, keeps strong, coming at you and very brave and, and tough. Whereas Donegan, he's just, he kind of, he, he can work as well, but he sits back, likes to look for the big shot. So it's a good clash of styles. I, I can't really call it, to be honest. I've not seen too much to be able to call it. But Fence sitting now. <laughs> fencing, fencing. I just want the winner anyway. <laughs> the, I guess, like, have you, you've obviously been involved with the gym here quite some time. Like, today, I, I probably, I've only been here a few times before, but it's absolutely packed. There's amateurs in, there's a lot of pros. You have Alan Babbage, obviously, in the gym now as well, bring a different character. Like, this gym's absolutely thriving at the moment. Is that a fair reflection of obviously how things are going in Celtic Warriors? Yeah, big time. Like, I remember that, that fight I had last April. I was the only one who had a fight coming up. Obviously, I think Thomas fought in May, but he was away with camp somewhere and so I was the only one really trained here at the time like so it was it was kind of hard to not hard to get up for training but you know now that we have the buzz of everyone here everyone has fights coming up and it just shows it, it's the case it's this gym is buzzing now we all have lots of fights but it's Irish boxing now Irish boxing I believe is back like big time I think the Katie Taylor card helped with that all the likes of you know elite sports and all them lads Jay Burns putting on shows it's, it's constant regular shows now and now these lads coming over here they're gonna put on regular shows and I think the gym will keep buzzing from that. Like Celtic Warrior has always been the main gym in Ireland, and I believe just the lads here we haven't really had the opportunities the last while, and now we're all getting the opportunities. We will show, and we all show we're all bouncing off each other here now in the gym again. So it's great. Mayo's obviously going to be like St Paddy's Day, obviously boxing, and people have not gone to ring us. It's going to be obviously buzzing. It's going to be packed. Probably in some ways, maybe be sad for you in the card as well. Probably looks like it's going to be Ray Mallette's obviously last out, and he sort of said, "I think this is my last sort of run." Like. You know, you probably think, as a, as a boxer, you probably only think of that probably maybe for him afterwards. Like, do you think this could be the last run for Ray as well? Eh, I don't know. He says that, you know, he says that, but he's going to get in there. He's going to get the buzz. I believe he'll get a good win, an, an emphatic win. And, you know, it's going to be hard to call it a day on that. You know, it is. But look, if he wants to walk away, what a better way to walk away in your hometown with a big win. But I believe he'll start getting offers and he'll start getting bigger fights maybe after. And, I, I, I'd be shocked to see him leave after this one. There's still there's still a lot of fighting Ray, I believe. I've seen him spar and stuff like that. So. I think fighters don't have that quite sort of in them. So obviously, you know, Spike there as well. Obviously, nearly 35 years he's at, at the boxing and he's sort of going. He doesn't see retirement sort of happening at times, and it's boxing's all his life. So whenever the offers come and money comes, you're always going to, you know, unless obviously your health gets deteriorated by boxing or getting badly knocked out, but. Yeah, like boxing's all pretty much most boxers know nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard to walk away from. But the lads, like, they've not been in in hard fights. Like, I know Spike's had big fights, but he's never really took a beat or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? And Spike is tough as anything. He looks after himself. Same with Ray. You know. So I believe they have a lot of years left. I remember Spike's last fight. Was, that was near two years ago now when he fought Lara, and I was sparring him. I was actually in training for my debut. It was around the same time. And I remember saying to him before he went off to New York, I was saying oh, I'd love to fight on a card with him before he retired and before I you know, kicked on or whatever. And we, then we did, obviously it wasn't coming to fruition the last year or so, I didn't know whether he was going to come back or not. And now that I got the opportunity to fight on the same card with him, it, it, it's brilliant, you know. It's like I've been around watching Spike for years now and been able to fight on the same card with him. And I believe we'll, we'll fight on a few more cards before he retires. Like, it's a lot You'll probably retire before he retire. Yeah, yeah honestly, yeah. <laughs> he likes it more than me, I think. <laughs> um, obviously, can we expect anything different, obviously, from you, I guess, obviously, with your hand healed and everything else? Like, what are we going to expect, obviously, from you in two weeks' time? Yeah, I believe, like, uh, the hand injury was a little bit of a blessing. I've been focusing more, because I was in the gym ever, since that Monday after the last fight. I've been in the gym every single day. So I've been having to practice more on my technique and stuff like that, working around the injury. So I believe I'm going to be a lot better in this fight, like, technically and stronger. I've been working my strength and conditioning an awful, awful lot, whereas before I was never doing that. It was just all cardio. I was going into the ring, feeling, I was fit, obviously very fit, but not feeling, you know, feeling a little bit weak. Whereas now when I'm sparring, I'm sitting down on shots and I'm hurting people with shots. And I'm, I'm technically a lot better, like, turning into shots and stuff like more. So I believe you'll see a good performance. So I, I feel like this would be my first knockout. Obviously, I'm not going to go go mad chasing the knockout, but I feel like I, I'll be, I always had that discipline to wait. Whereas now I have that power now to put behind it as well. So I believe you'll see a lot better me now. 
Now, we're looking forward to obviously seeing you obviously in Mayo, obviously on the 17th of March. Thanks very much for your time as always. I'm going to no doubt catch up with you after the fight night. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. Cheers, Dan. Thank you.